I started the Personalized Fitness Podcast to deal with dispelling the myths of health, fitness, and wellness. And that deals basically with questions that we get on a regular basis from running into people, talking to people. There are a lot of questions dealing with health, fitness, and wellness. What you may not realize is that we get a lot of those questions on a daily basis from all of our clients. And I thought it'd be a fantastic idea to have our exercise specialist, Katie Carey, come on today to talk to us about questions we get from clients today on the Personalized Fitness Podcast. Welcome to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast with Garrett Williamson. Health, wellness, exercise, nutrition, and a whole lot more. Got questions? Call us and leave a message at 251-278-EDGE or message us at Personal Edge Fitness on Facebook and Instagram at Team PE on Twitter or PersonalEdgeFitness.com. Good day and welcome to the Personalized Fitness Podcast. I'm Garrett Williamson, your host, president of Personalized Fitness. Thank you so much for joining us today. And with us today to answer some of these questions that clients get all the time is exercise specialist Katie Carey. Welcome back to the Hi show. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Before we dive into these, I want to tell you how to get in touch with us because of, well, exactly what we're covering in this show, and that is the multiple questions we get about health, fitness, and wellness. And if you have any questions concerning that or concerning this podcast, or as always, you have any questions about dispelling myths in health, fitness, and wellness, and you'll actually see that show up today, please contact us, area code 251-278-3343. That's 251-278-EDGE. You can also reach out to me at my email address, which is Garrett, G-A-R-R-E-T-T, at personalizedfitness.com. That is also our website and our Facebook page. Hit me up on Twitter, at Team PE. Speaking of questions... <laughs> Katie came to me with this idea because of the questions that she's getting from clients. And she seems to be, you were telling me you were getting like this, a, a lot, lot of, of the, the same, same questions. questions. Yeah. A lot of you have been asking, you know, similar questions and I think they're worth answering to the general public. So <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, well, and actually reviewing your notes on this, I was saying, okay, yeah, amazing. You thought of this because these are a lot of the same questions that I get, but you're right. I get these questions in consultations. Yeah. So I'm getting it even before people get into workout or being an exercise specialist. When you're out and about, yeah. people find out what you do. Right. You're getting those questions too, right? All the time. <laughs> that is so. And it's funny because a lot of them, a lot of them are, hey, look, I just, I'm looking for this answer. And if you're, if you're not watching this on social media, you're not seeing that I'm actually holding my fingers about an inch and a half part because we're looking for this small, quick, my question only involves just this much, right? this much information. And actually it's usually a deeper dive. Right. We need a lot more time to talk about it. So, in <laughs> fact, an entire podcast. Right. A whole podcast <laughs> so, for questions. All right. Far away, what are some of the questions that you get on a regular basis? So. Of course. Um, I have a few topics today. We're going to cover like water, weight loss, workouts, stretching, and soreness. Those seem to be the ones that like come up the most. Awesome topics. A lot of them that we've covered here on the show, but you'll see now the questions that we get about those. Right. Let's start with weight loss. I get a lot of questions A good around, one, especially this time of the year. Can I target weight loss and where I lose weight? The answer is no. Unfortunately, we cannot just pick, I want to lose weight here or I want to lose weight here. It does not work like that. I wish it did. Trust me. <laughs> there's, a, there's actually a term for that. And it's known as spot reduction. That's a common question we get. No matter what, I had, I had a client for years that would ask me that question in a variety of ways. And I answered it so many times that she actually told me, no, no, I'm not talking about like spot reducing. I'm just talking about changing the shape of this area right here. <laughs> And that was spot reduction. Okay. Right. Okay. We can, so we can't do we can't do spot reduction. Right. Why not? It just doesn't work like that. Your body's gonna burn fat from wherever it wants to burn fat from. It picks, you know, your body <laughs> picks. You don't. I actually went through a weight loss journey myself where I lost about seventy pounds. Oh wow. And it was interesting watching the different areas where I lost weight. Um, my arms were the first thing that I lost weight on, and right. unfortunately, my hips were the last. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> common problem but as well as you well know one thing it has to do with body type ectomorph endomorph mesomorph mm -hmm. body type you've probably heard this before men are built like apples women are typically built like pears that's where the good lord decided yeah. okay look this area needs to be protected and that's where it's going to carry the body fat and so you may gain it disproportionately mm -hmm. but you're going to lose it equally around the body so yep as, <laughs> as she says begrudgingly yes yep. exactly it, it frustrates us that. too i mean i mean we're human we're the, listen i can tell all that stuff to my clients but I want to know how to lose this area, this spot, right, this, spot this right here. This exact area. spot. Like, I want it going right here. How do I do it? <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, we have those same wants and desires, I guarantee you. So it's not like we're holding the secret from you, I promise right, you. Right, no, I, we're, I'd give it to you if I had it. Okay, we could, we could be here all day on that one just out of frustration. So. 
let's step on. What else yeah, do we have? Yeah, of course. How much weight loss is okay to lose per week? Ooh. Now, everything out there is going to tell you one to two pounds per week is for like sustainable weight loss. If you're looking to like get it off, keep it off, that's a lifestyle change. One to two pounds per week is where we should be. Personally, though, I was losing it a little bit faster and everything is going to be, you know, independent and individualized for that person. Right. Well, it's much like we approach designing a fitness program. Right. We tell people that all the time. In fact, I tell them at every consultation that we have as many different programs as we do people Mm -hmm. because your body is different. Uh, For instance, we had a we had a client start with us today, as a matter of fact, and has a medial meniscus tear. We've seen that a thousand times. I've got one myself. I mean, that's very familiar. We have not seen her Mm -hmm. medial meniscus tear. So when when our athletic trainer, Gary, Gary Zakutin, is actually doing an evaluation, he's looking at her. He knows what the situation is, but he doesn't know her situation. It's different. And so it's the same thing when it comes to weight loss. Mm -hmm. You're exactly right. So is it safe to go over one to two pounds? Yeah. Okay. You can definitely. Um, and there were weeks where, you know, I'd see a five pound fluctuation, but it also depends like how much are you eating that week? How much water are you drinking? Water weight plays a big role into that. Um, are you working out a lot more than normal that week? And then on the flip side of that, I have had weeks where I was only losing maybe half a pound or even I put on some weight. Right. Don't let that slow you down. Don't let that discourage you. <laughs> it happens. There's weeks where you're not going to see any progress. You may even go a little bit backwards. It's okay. <laughs> well, and it not also plays into, like you're saying, it depends on how much you've had to work out. And yeah. It, digestion plays a role in that. Yeah. I talked about this in the in the in when I did the podcast on weight. Weight is the gravitational pull of the earth on your body. And it's a great thumbnail way of, hey, how fit am I? But I would bet, when, like when, when you went through your own journey, mm-hmm. that at the beginning, you're seeing chunks yeah. drop and then as you got closer to your goal or closer to that magic number or closer to that your ultimate number yeah. that's when it probably got frustrating right for sure and we definitely had those ups and downs yeah <laughs> <laughs> what's going on at that point is that especially if you're working out you're gaining muscle if you're doing resistance training you're, you're gaining some muscle you may still be losing fat and you probably are still losing fat and the difference between how much muscle you're gaining and how much fat you're losing is the the amount of quote unquote weight loss. And y'all have heard me say this several times before. You know this individual. I'm not gonna mention a name here because he'll get mad if I say his name here. It's an Eastern Shore client of ours. He's he's really 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 small. I call him tiny, and that's a joke. But actually lost 50 pounds of fat in three months, and he gained 50 pounds of muscle. Mm-hmm. So his weight stayed exactly the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually had a client of ours that competes for Team USA and go from 125 to 125 in two months time. But when we did the body fat measurements, they were drastically different. Yeah. You know, so I and body I'm fat. glad that you brought up, you know, body fat measurements, because that's like the best way for us to measure health and overall weight fitness. Um, the scales that you see online are not accurate. According to them, I should be 150 pounds. I am a six foot female. Um, <laughs> that's not realistic for me, especially with the muscle that I have on me. As Amen. An okay. Athlete, so. and if I didn't care about uh, all this equipment that I own, I would drop the mic on that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's something we talk about quite often, and, and that is that what you're talking about, those scales online. The vast majority, I'm guessing, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but BMI? Yes. Oh, thank yeah, you. That's Amen where we to were you. I didn't tell her to say that. I, <laughs> I was promise. asking, you saw that. So. <laughs> but I did a whole a whole podcast on BMIs a lot. That was the Quidelet Index designed by Adolfo Quidelet, who was a Frenchman, who was a mathematician, he was a, a statistician, mm-hmm. and wanted a number to define how, wh- what kind of shape he was in. And again, and it is the most dangerous one. Oh, for sure. Out it, there is psychologically body mass index. dangerous. Period. Period. Yes. Known as the Quidelay Index until my good friend, you've heard me talk about him several times, Angel Key, has decided, hey, that looks like a good measurement since he knew nothing about exercise physiology either and termed it the body mass index. Yeah. Sorry, I went up way off on a you are plan, okay. but I appreciate you saying that. <laughs> Definitely so. What else we got? Let's head into workouts. One question I get is, how many days a week should I be working out? The good answer is three to five days a week. They don't all have to be strength workouts, though. And that kind of goes into my next question is, what type of workouts should I do on my extra days? Mm. Uh, days that you're not scheduled you know to work with us come in get a get a cardio session in we'd love to see you you know on your off days we love to have you in here but yeah. it's recommended for 150 minutes of moderate to light activity so even if you don't come in and see us go for a walk go, go outside exactly. get a walk it's nice here i promise it's cold in new york where i'm from so <laughs> <laughs> it's nice being able to go outside and walk that's a question we get a lot and we have exercises that are making a major lifestyle change and you've seen them once they start really getting into it they're passing 
past that 90 days. They don't want to miss. Right. Reason being is that you may experience this yourself, but you feel in control of your change. And one of the ways you really feel in control of your change, a lot of time isn't with your nutrition, it's with your work that you're doing. In other words, mm-hmm. going to the gym and working out. Mm-hmm. You know, that's when you really feel in control. So you feel like, okay, I want to go, I want to go and work right. out. And we'll see individuals doing resistance training, working the same muscles, yeah. what have you, day after day after day. Why do we not do that? Why do we not recommend that? Right, because we don't want to cause any overuse injuries. We don't want to get into right. that overuse, overtraining period where now we have to stop what we're doing. We're going to see a regression in our progress. True. Yeah, we're just really trying to avoid that overuse. And those overuse injuries, we did a podcast on that also. The overuse injuries come from usually as a result of something going on here in your Mm -hmm. mind. We've seen overuse injuries in people that uh, suffer from anorexia and what have you. You can easily, not so much eating disorders, but you can fall into that kind of an exercise disorder. Mm -hmm. I definitely did during my weight loss. I got stuck on that BMI number of 150. And I got down to 150 and I there was nothing left. I felt awful i had no energy during the day it just wasn't for me and you can go for that number and you can reach it and you can find out that it's not for you (laughs) exactly well and i don't know how you felt about how you looked at that time but when you hit that number yeah Last thing you want to do was live there, I would guess. Right. It was not satisfying for me. I found out that I actually wanted to go up another 15 to 20 pounds. Wanted Bingo. to do it the right way and build the muscle on. But yeah, I look back and I'm like, wow, I was really, really thin. <laughs> right, right. In a dangerous territory, as you're, Correct. As you're saying. So yeah. The problem there is, again, being obsessive about... I love you. Don't get me wrong about the word weight or using a scale when you first start, especially. It's a great rule of thumb. It's a great way to get an idea of where you are. We use it in our Catalyst program. We use it in our Unit to Lose It program. But once you get to a certain point, that's where the gravitational pull of the earth on your body is not not very important. No, so. it goes back to how you look and how you want to feel. Period. Period. So. So. And you know better than anybody because you experienced it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what else, though? One of our favorite questions is, how many more reps do I have to do? Are you counting? <laughs> are you counting let's, how let, many more a, reps? Let's go ahead and, and, and tell the truth about, are you counting? <laughs> go ahead and answer not. that one. So. <laughs> <laughs> you got two more. <laughs> We have a requirement here. It's tongue in cheek, of course, but we do have, we always say, tell everybody that we have a requirement here with hiring exercise specialists and hiring trainers on staff. And we've gotten very, very good. Uh, we have a fantastic staff and that I think it's added a lot to our culture. But the running joke that we tell clients is the fact that if we find out that a new instructor can actually count and, and keep all the numbers in order, that we won't hire them. So that's a... Right. That's a, you can't count and talk. Right. It's, <laughs> it doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, that one answered. Go back to what you were saying about the reps. Sorry. <laughs> no, of course. One thing I was just going to bring up is there's a different reps that will like program for you if you're looking for strength or if you're looking for power. Now, these are definite? No. Okay. Recommended. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> and that's why they're on a scale, you know. So if we're training for strength, you're going to be looking in like the 6 to 12 range. That doesn't mean we're not going to bump you up to maybe 15, even 20. But if we're going for just strictly power, we're looking for one to four reps. So it's going to be a lot of weight weight and more reps now strength and endurance we're gonna see maybe a lighter weight but we're going he- like longer reps that's a question i get quite often about reps kind of added on to that yeah especially as people as time passes on the calendar and and people get older the belief yeah. is that well you should only do you know lightweight and high reps that's yeah. it is that no. true no, absolutely okay. not. <laughs> okay. Okay. I get that a lot. Well, higher reps and lower weight is the same as higher weight, lower rep. First thing, the, all that whole jargon is all relative. That creates a belief system that, okay, if I'm doing a 15-pound curl at 12 repetitions, well, then I can do a 5-pound curl for 15 repetitions, and it's the same thing. Definitely not. So what is the reason for power, heavy and short, and yeah. endurance? for light and long. We're hitting different energy systems within the muscle, which is going to hit different muscle fibers. Right. Um, different twitch muscles. Yeah. <laughs> that we fast, fast switch, slow switch yeah, muscle. There we yeah. Go. yeah, exactly. So that's, you know, it really depends on, you know, is this person running marathons? We do have some marathon runners right. that train with us. Or is this person, you know, coming in to do classic Olympic lift? No, that makes perfect sense. So <laughs> what else we got? All right, we're moving on to stretching. Everybody's favorite time of the workout is when we go to hit those mat tables and stretch that's after true, they've though. asked us how many reps they've done. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's actually true that yeah. everybody looks forward to the stretching. Until so. we make them do abs before. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I have a um, client that always thinks that's a mean trick. Right. And when I have the mat table, I'm done. No, right. we got to have no, work you got to do the abs. Exactly. <laughs> One thing I've been asked is, what does stretching do for me? So obviously stretching, you know, we're going to increase that flexibility. We're increasing the range of motion. But along with that, there's a bunch of other benefits. Two that I'm going to stress on is it increases our blood flow to our muscles, which is going to allow for better recovery. It also has stress relief, you know. Very much so. Yeah. yeah. Stretching is good. Absolutely. We're, pro- we're not so. trying to hurt you. And going on with that, does stretching have to hurt? Stretching should not be painful. And by painful, I mean you should not have to go see a doctor for stretching. <laughs> um, exactly. It may be uncomfortable while we do it, but it should not be painful. <laughs> That's one of my favorite fortes, having a background in gymnastics, is, is work and flexibility. We always stretch... Not before the session, we stretch at the end of the session, right? right? The reason for that is that actually, I've talked about this before, give credit where credit's due, Dr. Mike Bracco of the Canadian Institute of Hockey and past president of American College of Sport Medicine came out with a fantastic study around 2014 talking about whether to stretch before or afterwards. And I know it was still within the margin of error, but they found out that actually you can increase injury by Mm -hmm. stretching before. But I love what you said about whether or not it should hurt. Yeah. But pain is relative. Correct. Okay. If you were raised by a Marine, pain is just weakness leaving the body. Exactly. We're not quite going to that extreme, (laughs) I promise you. I promise. We use, in fact, we even do this now uh, more with our our endurance training, more than we use heart rate. We use kind of a RPE scale, rate of perceived exertion. Right. And so, so on a scale of one to 10, how painful is this? If you're really pushing that eight territory and going higher, yeah, that's painful. If you stretch too far, yeah, you can, you can pull a muscle, which is why we do manual stretching, but... The reason we do that and the reason I caution anybody about taking manual stretching for anybody that doesn't have a degree in exercise physiology is they don't know the anatomy. They don't know the tolerance, the actual tolerance of the muscle and, you know, techniques like PNF stretching. Tough to learn in a weekend certification, you know, so right, to do it correctly. Sure. So we do it day in and day out. I don't know. How many people did you stretch yesterday? I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So hurts so good, right? Right. Hurts so good. Yeah, that's what we should go for. (laughs) Definitely so. The next one I want to talk about is soreness. So does, you know, leading right into it. Speaking of pain. Right, speaking of pain. (laughs) (laughs) Pain and stretching. Right. Should I be sore? Definitely for our new clients starting out, you're probably going to be sore for the first few sessions. By the way, I'm going to clarify this as far as resistance training and working out, not just stretching. Right, not stretching. We're on to just general soreness now after working out with us. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, there's a training adaptation that's going to happen within our muscles. They take a little while to adjust to this new stress that we've put them under. Resistance training is a stress on the body. Right. And it takes a little time to adapt to that. So you're going to be sore with that. What is the soreness? What's causing that? Yeah, so soreness is just small tears within our muscle tissue. Um, When we're lifting weights, we're actually causing small tears within that muscle tissue. And then the soreness is our body trying to fix that. It's repairing it. And that's where we see the muscle growth. It's growing. It's repairing itself. It's growing. We're filling in those little tears. (laughs) (laughs) And then with that, another question I get is, you know, I used to be sore, but I don't get sore anymore. And why is that? And that's because that training adaptation finally happened. Right. Your body's finally used to the stress that you put it under with those muscles. Now I can have somebody that says that to me and put them on a new machine that they've never tried before and bingo bingo there's our soreness they haven't worked those muscles yet those muscles aren't used to it that's the thing about what katie's talking about as far as adaptation when you start working out many times you will have that general soreness and like you already described what that was but all right you've been working out for a while oh my gosh i went and did this new exercise and i got sore again and am i going backwards and i like what you said about that it is an adaptation at the beginning it's an adaptation then when you go to a new machine or new exercise and moving the muscle in a different way it's another adaptation. Yep. Now, it may not be as severe usually as like when you first start working out. No. So Unless you really make your trainer mad. Now, it can be very, <laughs> very severe. I did have a bad day where I put somebody on the um, hip abduction. Right. And they hadn't done that one before. They, they were sore the next I'm day, sure. So. I wouldn't doubt it. All right. Let's talk about the other end of the spectrum. We have plenty of clients that are looking to make, I mean, significant yeah. gains that they yeah. that they're really wanting to make big gains or whatever that is their goal every day, every week they yeah. want to get stronger and stronger and in some cases some of our guys are literally bigger and bigger for that matter speak to soreness with them for those people that have been lifting for a long time just because you're not sore doesn't mean that you're no longer making that progress right you can work out really well and not get sore and that also has a lot to do with how you're recovering Bingo. are you drinking water are you eating your protein getting those nutrients back in your body after you work out you know a big part of soreness is recovery are you stretching right what are you doing to make your body feel better if you don't mind i would add on to that that, yeah. that so many people feel like that i'm not working out if i'm not sore right i feel better that i'm sore well the flexibility 
of the work that we do, if you're yeah. if you're doing the things that we've recommended, which many most of our clients are doing, well, then they wonder well, why I'm not sore. Well, because your body's become more efficient, yeah. and what you just said, your recovery because you're doing the right things and right. you have done the right things over a long period of time. Your recovery is so much better because your body's more efficient. Our quote unquote gains come yes. from that recovery process. We it's, tear the muscles exactly. and that's where our gains come from. We're so, not, as I've said before, we're not building anything in here. We're just breaking right. it down. So with that, if you want to be sore, that's great. We can make you sore, but at the same time, you don't want to be sore for a week straight. Right. You want to give your body time to recover so that it can make that progress. Exactly. 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 So <laughs> what else do we have? Um, I know we've got one on there. I saw it earlier and I know, I know it's on there because it's one of my favorite topics. I know we're coming up on it. So <laughs> with the gains and the soreness, one thing that, you know, is going to help you with recovery, like I just mentioned, is drinking water. So see, see, next yeah, see she's acting like she's water. reluctant to talk about this. <laughs> she knows it's one of my favorites, but she had it on her notes. Before I did. I said it anything. was on here. No, our next topic is drinking water. Exactly. Um, Garrett pushes water. And so because Garrett's always in people's ear, like, hey, you got to drink water. Um, um, clients are asking me, like, hey, why is Garrett always yelling at me to drink water? <laughs> um, so is that benef- my wife? Is she starting with that? <laughs> water is beneficial for a lot of people. I'm sure you've heard it from Garrett for a long time. I'm going to give you three reasons, my top three reasons on why we should drink water. It helps remove the waste from the body. So we're not, you know, hanging on to that. allows our body to recover faster. It lubricates and cushions those joints we need that. Very much so. And actually, it's course. funny you picked those three because those are three. The first one, I don't know that I've ever mentioned about it actually removing waste from the body. Yeah, And sure. uh, And you're, you're exactly right. But but I, those are three that I typically don't don't hit on because awesome. I'm usually focused on you know, thinking better, thinking clearer, losing fat, yeah. controlling cravings. But yeah, you're exactly right. And one of the things that you're talking about as far as waste, and, and you, you were addressing this because one of the best ways to handle soreness. Yeah is taken in water okay yeah. speak to that if you don't mind i'm putting you on the spot here <laughs> these three things put them together for me the soreness the waste yeah. and the water we're going to talk about that burn everybody thinks about that lactic acid burn it's yeah. building up in the muscles that burn you feeling is not the lactic acid building up during the exercise but does it come into the muscles afterwards yes and we need to get rid of it right. we need to help that recovery and water will take that lactic acid out of your muscles. <laughs> right, right. It, it, and that's part of the waste product. Right. The, the soreness that you feel the next day, again, the repair process going on, the white blood cells going in. And actually, I always compare it to punching a hole in sheetrock. Yeah. You don't just start painting. Right. You know, you've got to tear out the paper of the, of the sheetrock and all that stuff. And that's exactly what your white blood cells are doing. And that creates a pile of, you know, we got a pile of stuff over here, which is waste. Having enough hydration in your system yeah. is going to, okay, is the truck coming to pick this up and get this out of our way? Great. We can get back to work. And that's another thing I got on here that I wanted uh, to talk about. See, I'm about jumping it. ahead. It's a lot it. of our um, plasma. It's water. Um, it carries nutrients and oxygen to the muscles, which is going to lead to that faster recovery. Exactly. So it's bringing the good stuff in and helping get rid of the bad stuff. <laughs> right, right. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> And along with that, you know, like I said, it lubricates and cushions those joints um, for a lot of us that may feel our joints hurting when it gets cold, even though it doesn't get cold. Um. <laughs> <laughs> she's from New York. you got to understand why she's saying that. So that's why she says it didn't get cold down here. So she's out in flip flops when it's, you know, right. four degrees outside. So. <laughs> <laughs> so no i get it though and it definitely you feel better when you drink more water you right, really true. Do. Um, and then with that garrett i'm gonna ask you the golden question Uh-oh. how much water <laughs> <laughs> well let's see i'm not sure it's off the top of my head i'm gonna see if i know this or not so right. but uh 100 ounces of water a day every single day why is it 100 ounces of water well it's recommended by the national institute of health the american medical association american dietary association harvard medical stanford medical mayo clinic cooper clinic uh, cleveland clinic i can keep going if you'd like me to i think i'll stop now did i answer it sufficiently i think you got it good okay i think i passed my test that day so fantastic um, he got me on board with the tracking exactly These with the bands, rubber bands our little bands you, you move say? them down i have a huge cup so i only have three um, <laughs> yeah Easily, it easily can do that nowadays. Yeah, so anyway. for sure. Well, I appreciate you coming on of and talking course. about the common questions. When Katie approached me about this, these are questions that I've heard that all of us have experienced. Yeah. I wanted you to come on on the show mainly to show everybody. Look, I'm not the only one saying this. That we right. get these on a regular basis. But I'll ask you: You going to get these same questions next week? Is that going to annoy you? No. Do you mind answering them? Of so. course, I will always answer your questions, and I would love to keep doing this. If you have more questions, please reach out to us. I'd love to keep coming on and answering questions. Absolutely. So. 
absolutely. Definitely. And if you have any questions about that, in fact, we're going to set up something, a Dropbox here at the facility if anybody has any questions, wants to ask them anonymously, not a problem whatsoever. If you'd like to reach out to us, you can call us at area code 251-278-3343. That's 251-278-EDGE. Reach out to me at Garrett, G-A-R-R-E-T-T at personaledgefitness.com. Reach out to Katie at K-A-T-I-E <laughs> at personaledgefitness.com. Reach out to us at Twitter at, at Team PE. Here always to answer your questions because that's just one more way we help you reach your level of wellness. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Garrett. Thank you. (laughs) Thanks for listening to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast with Garrett Williamson. Subscribe now and be a part of the show by calling 251-278-EDGE or message us on Facebook and Instagram at Personal Edge Fitness or at Team PE on Twitter and visit us at personaledgefitness.com.